There are a surprising amount of video games made by YouTubers out there, and today I'm going to talk about some more of them. Surprise, surprise. I have, of course, already covered a bunch of games made by YouTubers in a bunch of different videos, so if there's a game I don't cover here today, chances are that I already did in another video. Feel free to check out the playlist after. First off, I'm not going to be covering any games that YouTubers have simply published, just developed. YouTubers obviously outsource teams to help develop their games, and don't always do much of the work themselves, but I think it's still more interesting to talk about as opposed to YouTubers who just spend money to help publish games. I was trying to just include YouTubers who didn't have any previous game development experience, and that's because I think it's a funnier topic to explore, but I kind of messed up a bit there. Oh well. I'm also not going to be talking about mods, fan games, voice acting, skins, board games, or anything of the like, with one exception. A couple people recommended to me that I go over annotation games, a great example of an annotation game is Markiplier in Space. Annotation games are choose-your-own-adventures in the form of a video series on YouTube. The first video will set up a premise that leads to an ending with two potential directions the story could go. Your job is to pick the correct direction to continue the story, and that goes on and on until the series is over. This has been done by many different YouTubers in the past and has been around since the early days of YouTube. However, annotations used to look a lot different. Wheezy Waiter's annotation adventures always seem to go above and beyond and in my opinion were the best, but I'm sure everyone has their favorites. Now time for some unfinished business. In my last video about YouTuber games, I teased Keemstar's video game but I never talked about them in detail. <sighs> so I'm gonna set things right and cover them right now. For those who don't know, Keemstar is a very controversial creator who mostly covers drama but can also run fast as fuck boy. Believe it or not, Keem actually had three different games. The first app he made in 2017 is a fidget spinner app where you just tap to spin the fidget spinner. Keemstar's fidget my spinner? That's a pretty gay title. You can upgrade it as you go and customize your fidget spinner and background. I don't think there's much else to it. It's also no longer available for download. I'll let Keemstar explain the next one. The YouTube gods put a mobile app on your phone called the Adpocalypse. And once you start playing this game on your phone, you realize that the YouTube gods gave you the ability to take talents from smaller YouTubers and combine them. And when you combine them, you make bigger YouTubers, and then you can combine them and make bigger YouTubers and bigger YouTubers, and all of a sudden, you got all the amazing talent and skills out of all of YouTube, and your YouTube views start going through the roof, and you start making millions of dollars. You unlock over 37 of the greatest YouTubers of all time, taking their abilities, taking their talents, and taking their YouTube ad money. And when you get to the end, you have officially survived the Adpocalypse! So as he said, it's of course based off the Adpocalypse that happened on YouTube between 2016 and 2017. The Adpocalypse was essentially a point in time in YouTube's history where advertisers were boycotting YouTube due to its, at the time, edgy nature. So of course, as a result, many YouTubers were not getting paid well. Anyway, not much of this footage exists nowadays. But funnily enough, in one of the few videos that do exist of the game, the person playing it comments how this game ironically has a ton of ads and microtransactions. And all that does happen in the game is you combine YouTubers together to create bigger YouTubers. This game does feature many creators, which is cool, I guess, but the game itself doesn't look very exciting. Unfortunately, I'll never know how it ends because I cannot play it myself for it is no longer available to download. There's also a video game that Key made about Area 51 that I forgot to mention in this video. So yes, that's right. He has four different games, and if there's a fifth one out there that I didn't find, then I apologize. This game is based off the meme from 2019 where everyone was saying they would Naruto run into Area 51. It's still available on Steam for $15. I'm not willing to buy this myself, but if you guys really want to see me play it, then... Maybe someday I'll stream it. But for now, I'll just be watching Mudahar's video on it. There's really not much to say on this game. It seems like it's definitely hard to figure out what to even do in this game. I mean, it gives you zero direction. I believe all you do is rescue these aliens by bringing them to a certain spot. The guards don't seem to react to you half the time. You can also see how visually bad this game looks. There's no animations for some pretty simple actions. Keem has since said there was updates to the game, but I don't imagine it's been redeemed much 
much at all. Oh my god, that must have been the worst game that I've played in my life. In my original recording where I talk about Keem's next game, I think I accidentally mispronounced the game. Or maybe it was Keem that mispronounced it. For about a year in the background, we've been working on this other game, No Macer. He calls it No Macer, even though it's definitely No Mancer. No Macer. Anyway, researching this game was kind of confusing since some people talked about a cancelled PS4 game called No Mageddon saying it was Keemstar's game, but it wasn't. It was a completely different game that people confused with No Mancer. Even then, No Mancer doesn't feature Keem's name anywhere, and it's not very popular with only 13 Steam reviews. However, I was able to confirm that this game is definitely made by Keem, and surprisingly this game is still available to buy and sells for $11 on Steam. This game is up to 4 players and uh... Hey Keem, you wanna collab? <laughs> it's probably the only way I'll play this game. It's a twin stick shooter where you fight with your gnomes. You can kind of think of this game as a more combat focused and boring version of Pikmin. Even YouTube thinks the two games are similar. There's a bunch of different classes you can play as. There's a storyline, but it doesn't look like there's anything special to it. I believe the main goal of every mission, or at least every mission I skipped through, is all about collecting rune stones. To be completely honest, this game doesn't look as bad as I would have imagined. However, I genuinely don't think it's worth the price. And if you were wondering what's up with the gnomes, well I suppose that Keemstar embraced the facts... <laughs> I mean the meme that he looks like a gnome. Anyway, that's it for the surprisingly long history of Keemstar developing games. By the way, real quick, I want to say thank you to Moist Critical for reacting to my last video on his stream. It was just really cool to see that. It was a fun watch and it made my day. And on another note, regarding comments that I got like this on a previous video, yes, I do know what APKs are. In this video, I said a lot of games were lost to time when in reality, some have APKs available. So when I say lost to time in that video, or maybe even in this video, I suppose I'm just referring to their original homes. Also, sorry for the title of this video, you probably won't be surprised by every single person on the list. However, I did not know most of them, but either way, I hope you enjoy. Anyway... Going back to Markiplier, Lixian has made many famous Markiplier animated videos, has edited for Mark for years, and has a YouTube channel with over a million subscribers. On top of that, he's also a game developer. The first game he made was in 2018, and it was called Shield Blast. It's a space invader slash bullet hell type of game. I'm not sure how to properly describe it, but I'm sure you get the idea. The name of the game refers to an attack where you blast a bunch of enemies. The premise of the game is that Earth is running low on resources, and your mission is to deliver more resources. In the same year, he participated in a game jam where he made a game called Mind Ripple, which is described as an experimental psychedelic platformer. One year later, he participated in a new game jam and he made a platformer called Do It For Me, which was made in under 24 hours. In 2019, he then made a horror game for Mark's birthday called Damien. Earlier this year, he also made Ricochet Gun. It's a game where you have to carefully plan your shots or else your bullet will ricochet and potentially kill you. The final game he made is called Late Night Mop, which is a horror cleaning simulator. I believe all of these games are still available to be played on his itch.io page. Yo Mama is a YouTube channel based around Yo Mama jokes, and the guy sounds like Joe Swanson. Yo Mama's so fat! She thought Squid Game was a sushi eating competition! I'm not sure if that was on purpose or not, but that's what it is. I guess he's also some kind of VTuber sometimes. But other than that, there's not much else to the channel. They made a game called Yo Mama Arcade. There is so little information of this game out there, but I believed it released sometime in 2018, but it's already off of the App Store. The app seems to be a collection of mini games revolving around these lovely mamas. The mini games are tea dunking eating contest and yeah, that's it. The one video I found only shows off those two games, which leads me to believe those are the only two in existence. But there is a section for Yo Mama jokes, so this app must have been pretty good. Cinema Scare is a classic YouTuber who is often credited as the first person to make and popularize game reviews on YouTube. He's most popular for his angry video game nerd series, but he's also ventured out with many different types of content like a podcast, a movie, and even his own band.
Japan. Not to mention he's also released two different video games. They are the Angry Video Game Nerd Adventures 1 and 2. The first being released in 2013 and the second in 2016. They're both 8-bit action adventure platform games. Along with many AVGN references and even cameos from other YouTubers such as Gerard the Completionist, Andre the Black Nerd, and Eagle Raptor to name a few. In 2020, they revamped all of the games and released them together on PC and all modern consoles, with an actual physical release on the Nintendo Switch and PS4. It actually looks like a really solid platformer. I haven't played it myself, but from what I've seen, I get real strong Mega Man and Shovel Knight vibes. This is a game I would actually love to stream if you guys want to see me play it. But you gotta let me know. <laughs> Lauren Z side is a 6 million plus gaming YouTuber. She also uploads a bit of variety, but still it's mostly gaming. My favorite videos I watched from her are the videos where she plays really bad mobile games that I have roasted in the past, but she pretends like they're the best games ever. Anyway, her game is a Candy Crush type beat. It's still available to play, but honestly from the trailer, I think I'm all set. I'm not saying the game is bad or anything, all I'm saying is I think I already understand what this game's about. So in a previous video, I covered every single mobile game and app made by Smosh, but I accidentally forgot to talk about two Flash games. So I'm going to assume you already know who Smosh is at this point. They're a comedy collective that's been making videos since 2005, and the two founders are Ian Hecox and Anthony Padilla. Ian still works on Smosh, and Anthony now posts thirst traps of his hands. One of their old school characters was named Boxman, whose life story is told through a series of music videos, and one of their Flash games is called Boxman's Escape. The game opens with a bad remix of the original Boxman song. Boxman is at home watching TV. A knock on the door, who could that be? The plot of the game is that cops are trying to capture Boxman to perform some tests on him. So Boxman activates a time bomb to blow up the place and tries to run away. But before he can run away, he needs to collect his mac and cheese. Thus, the game begins. The goal of the game is to collect all of the mac and cheese while avoiding the cops. All you do is move around using the arrow keys. This game isn't too hard, but sometimes it's hard to tell what you can and can't walk through. Not to mention, the enemies seem to spawn around randomly and can spawn right on top of you. There's four levels in total, and when I beat it, the screen just went black. The next is called Smosh Fighters. It's literally a basic fighting game where you can play as Ian or Anthony, and whoever you don't pick is the one you fight. There's also a couple maps, but other than that, it's very basic. But lucky for us, both of these games are still available to play. I also previously covered every single annoying orange game, but I guess I missed one. This one's called Skewers, and the best game I can compare it to is Snake. You go around piercing fruit and dropping them off in the blender. I'm pretty sure I missed this one because on a surface level, this game has nothing to do with the annoying orange. But what I found is there's an annoying orange mode you can turn on and off. And you know I leave that shit on. It doesn't do anything aside from change the power-ups into annoying orange characters. And every now and then they pop up. Don't mind if I drop in, do ya? <laughs> I didn't even get a chance to try out any of these power-ups. And that's because the turning in the game sometimes feels so delayed. And overall, the game just moves too slow for me to put up with. And yes, it's bad that you liked the annoying orange games. You should feel ashamed. Dennis is a Roblox YouTuber with almost 10 million subscribers. I guess he also has some connection or inside joke with cats. His brand seems to revolve around this cat named Sir Meows a lot. I don't know, I didn't look into it too hard, but either way, his game is called Cats and Cosplay. It came out in 2018 and is a tower defense game where you fend off seemingly random random enemies with cats. I haven't played it, but it is still available for download. From what I've seen, the game looks all right. There's a decent variety of characters to play and a bunch of upgrades. However, nothing really stood out to me. Tomska is a British YouTuber whose bread and butter is comedy sketches. He's probably most known for creating Asdif Movie and his work on Ed's World. He made a game called Cat Attack. I'm the Lego Movie. Cat Attack is kind of a side-scrolling, tower defense, shooty game, but basically it's just a game about shooting cats from outer space because that is the full extent of my writing capabilities. Damn it, brain, these films suck. How do you expect me to write a good script with this trash? How about Space Cats? Space Cats? That's brilliant. Okay, so he did a bad job at explaining the game, but basically it's a beat em up game against cats. Huh. Two cat games in a row. He says he either got the idea from a 2011 video he made called Holy Shit Cats. Found a way through the Astro Cat space hole. That makes perfect sense. 
before he got the idea from a 2009 Ed's World video he wrote called Movie Makers. In that video, Tom's character is trying to think of a movie idea, but all of his ideas involve space cats in some way. So they end up filming a movie about space cats. This man's mind is truly something to behold. Anyway, for the game, he got professional voice actors, Mr. Weeble animated the cutscenes, and there were cameos from other YouTubers like PewDiePie, Gavin Free, Markiplier, and more. The game got delayed for a few months, but it finally released in late 2014 for Apple and Android. It looks like it might have been decent, but unfortunately it's no longer available for download. Anyway, there's also an Asdif movie board game called Muffin Time, but I'm not here to talk about board games. Got it? Dan is not on fire and Amazing Phil are two British YouTubers. Huh two British YouTubers in a row. They're both known for being sexy Tumblr men. Or at least that's how I found out about them in like 2012. They've both been on the platform for the longest time and have made a variety of different videos. And as a side note, this video made by Dan is incredible. If you're thinking about making YouTube your job, please watch this video. Anyway, the two made an app called the 7 Second Challenge. It's a party game where you have to perform a random task within 7 seconds. They came up with the idea from a video film made with another YouTuber kick the PJ. In the video, the two do the same exact thing that you do in the app, which is a random task within seven seconds. The game may have been all right, but it's no longer available for download. Okay, Dan, make up a rap about space. I did this on the radio. <laughs> okay, uh, space, space, it's the best. If you earn out in just a vest, you die. <laughs> <laughs> Swanky Box is a YouTuber who analyzes games in a very unique way. I don't know quite else how to describe his channel. In 2020, he released a game called Zardy's Maze. It's a challenging horror game where you wander a corn maze with the goal of cutting down plants. You do all this while avoiding the creepy pumpkin witch dude named Zardy. I do think with this game, the tension is definitely there. Because you just turn a corner and it's a fucking gamble if you are going to be stalked or not. I mean, for what it is, it's fine. It's hard to impress me with horror games in general, so I uh, give it a passing grade. You can play it for free on Steam, and Zardy's Maze 2 is still in development. iDubs is a YouTuber who has made a wide variety of content over the years. You may recognize him from his Content Cop series, or maybe even a viral meme. <laughs> I'm gay. I have crippling depression. More recently, he created the Creator Clash where regular YouTubers boxed one another. One thing not everyone knows about him is that his early content was of him playing video games. And he was really into game development. However, all of his gaming videos have since been deleted. Fun fact, at times he also used to be a beta tester. His video game is called Think or Swim and was made in a 24-hour game jam. The website it was hosted on has since been deleted, but thanks to the Wayback Machine, we can still access it. This game has two different sides to it. For each level, you can pick whether you want to think or swim. Whenever you choose swim, you have to mash the arrow keys to reach the boat before the sharks get you. Think will give you a trivia question, but the answers are always the ones with a 69 in them. After only three levels, you get this lovely trophy and that's it. Weeble Stuff is a YouTube channel responsible for a bunch of popular old school viral videos. I'm sure you've seen at least one of these. In 2011, they made a game called Russian Dancing Man game, appropriately named after their 2010 music video, Rushing Dancing Man. It's a runner game that's filled to the brim with Weeble Stuff references, and very catchy music. All you have to do is tap on the appropriate buttons when a certain obstacle appears. I believe the game had 10 levels and some kind of storyline. From what is available, it seems like the story is all about Russians wanting to dance. The game looks good for what it is, but to be fair, I do have a soft spot for this channel. And unfortunately, this game has been lost to time. Rental Floss is a YouTuber who made mainly makes videos centered around video game music. His most popular series is one where he adds lyrics to video game music that doesn't already have lyrics. His game is called Use Your Words, which came out in 2017. It's a self-described Jackbox party game. There's a few different game modes, but the premise of the game is that you have to fill in a prompt of a specific scenario with whatever you want, and the goal of the game is to make everybody else laugh. You can still play it today, and there's also a second game in development. The Kickstarter actually just finished up. I'm sure the game's fine. I don't know, I didn't play it, but there's two things that I want to point out that caught my eye during the video game's trailer. There's this moment where a girl talks, but nobody moves their lips. <laughs> I'm totally voting for that one. 
I'm totally voting for that one. Who said that? Was it the granny off screen? Just very weird editing. There's also an option in the game where if you can't think of anything funny to write for your answer, the game will give you a decoy answer. But if another player gives you points for the decoy answer, you gain points, but they lose points. So watch this one guy's face when he loses points. Ah, grandma! <laughs> you got me. It was me! <laughs> He looks so angry, so passive aggressive in this otherwise lighthearted ad. He just looks like he's holding on to so much rage, but just knows he can't let it out on poor old grandma. I, I just love it. Here's a bunch of games made by YouTubers that you guys recommended I check out, but didn't. I still plan to make a couple more videos on these YouTuber games, but there's just so many out there I don't plan on covering every single one of them. I didn't leave these ones out specifically for any specific reason. Honestly, they were just left out at random. When I got to the point in the script writing process where I felt satisfied with the length of it, I obviously stopped writing and these were just the unlucky ones. But that's all I got for now. Thank you for watching and I hope you all have a fantastic Tuesday.